Hi friends, welcome back. I hope that you are enjoying Bunny Double, We're in Trouble. Today we are going to read chapters six, seven, and eight together. Here we go. Chapter six is titled, I Thought I Was Gonna Die. Mrs. Bubbles led us inside Hubble Manor. There were separate rooms for the first graders, second graders, third graders, and fourth graders. Me and the gang went into the third grade room. A long table was in there. And you'll never believe in a million hundred years who walked in the door at that moment. Nobody. It would hurt if you walked into a door. But you'll never believe who walked into the doorway. It was our art teacher from school, Miss Hannah. She never throws anything away because she says everything can be art. Miss Hannah was wearing an Easter dress made out of old pot holders. What are you doing here, Miss Hannah? Asked Neil. Are you gonna pass out the peeps? Asked Alexia. We want peeps, I shouted, jumping up from my seat. We want peeps. I figured everybody would jump up from their seats and start chanting, we want peeps with me. I looked around, nobody else was standing. Nobody else was chanting. Everybody was looking at me. Well, that was embarrassing. I sat back down in my seat. No, I'm not here to pass out peeps, said Miss Hannah. I'm going to help you do Easter egg dyeing. What? I thought Easter eggs were already dead, I said. Everybody laughed, even though I didn't say anything funny. Not that kind of dying dumb head. Andrea said, rolling her eyes. We're going to dye eggs in different colors. It's my favorite thing to do in the whole world. Mine too, shouted Emily. She jumped up in the air and started hugging Andrea. Everything those two do is their favorite thing to do in the whole world. What is their problem? Why can't a truck full of Easter eggs fall on their heads? We all sat down at the long table Miss Hannah got out a bunch of eggs and cups and other stuff from a cabinet. She put a colored tablet into each cup and then poured water and vinegar into the cups. Ugh, the vinegar smelled horrible. I thought I was gonna die. I mean, die. We put our eggs into those little wire things so we could dip them into the cups. Miss Hannah showed us how we could put stickers on the eggs or wrap rubber bands around them so the dye would only color certain parts of the egg. It was pretty cool, I had to admit. We dyed a lot of eggs. At the end, our fingers were all different colors. We had to wait a few minutes for our eggs to dry. So Miss Hannah had us sing this song called Little Bunny Foo Foo. Did you ever hear that song? It's about this rabbit that goes hopping through the forest, sees a bunch of field mice that were minding their own business, and it starts bopping them on the head for no reason. He probably went crazy because his parents named him Fufu. What kind of name is Fufu? I'll bet all other rabbits made fun of him at school. If my parents named me Fufu, I would run away to Antarctica to go live with the penguins. That song is weird. We had to sing it about five million times. Then Miss Hannah got out crayons so we could draw pictures on our dyed eggs. I'm going to draw a pretty butterfly, said Andrea. Me too said Emily. I'm going to draw an elephant stomping on two butterflies, I said. You're mean, Arlo, Andrea said. Miss Hannah started singing that bunny foo-foo song again, and you'll never believe who poked his head into the door at that moment. Nobody, it would hurt if you poked your head into a door. I thought we went over that already. But you'll never believe who poked his head into the doorway. I'm not going to tell you. Okay, okay, I'll tell you, but you have to read the next chapter. So na 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 boo boo on you. <laughs> chapter seven, the Easter bunny is weird. It was Mr. Klutz who poked his head into the doorway. Are you having a good time? He asked. Yes, shouted all the girls except for Alexia. No, shouted all the boys and Alexia. This looks fun, said Mr. Klutz. Did you ever dye Easter eggs, Mr. Klutz? Asked Ryan. Sure I did, he replied. I was a boy once, you know. Only once? I asked. I'm a boy all the time. 
Everybody laughed, even though I didn't say anything funny. Mr. Klutz leaned down so he could get a good look at our colored eggs. That's when I noticed something. Mr. Klutz's head looked just like an egg. Hey, Mr. Klutz, I said, can we dye your head? Well, it was like I said a bad word or something. All the kids stopped talking. Mr. Klutz looked at me. Miss Hannah looked at me. Everybody was looking at me. I thought I heard crickets chirping. I'll make a deal with you, AJ, Mr. Klutz told me. I'll let you dye my head if you can recite the eight times table. Hmm, we were learning the eight times table at school. I wasn't sure if I remembered the whole thing. Eight times one is eight, I said, because one eight can only be eight. Any dumb head knows that. Right, said Mr. Klutz. Eight times two is 16, I said, because eight plus eight is 16. Yes. Eight times three is 24, I said, adding another eight. Mm-hmm. Eight times four is 32, Andrea whispered in my ear. 32, I said. I kept going. Some of them I knew and some of them I didn't. When I didn't know an answer, Andrea or Emily whispered it in my ear. Finally, I got to the end. And eight times 10 is 80, I said. That's right, said Mr. Klutz. Now you may dye my head. We couldn't dip Mr. Klutz's head into the cup because it was too big. Miss Hannah gave us Q-tips so we could dab the dye on Mr. Klutz. We had a great time dyeing his head red, white, blue, and green. When the dye was dry, Andrea drew a butterfly right in the middle. It looked cool. After that, Mr. Klutz left and he took his dyed head with him. It was cleanup time. While we cleaned up, Miss Hannah turned on a boom box and the song Here Comes Peter Cottontail started playing. Hey, guess who's coming kids? Asked Miss Hannah. Santa Claus? I asked. Santa comes at Christmas, dumb head, said Andrea. Oh, snap, said Ryan. I was going to say so is your face to Andrea, but you'll never believe in a million hundred years who walked into the door at that moment. It was a giant Easter bunny. He walked right into the door. Ouch, the Easter bunny yelled. Who put this door here? I can't see through the stupid bunny head. That voice sounded familiar. I knew I had heard it before. Hey, the Easter bunny isn't supposed to talk, said Michael. Oh yeah, I forgot, said the Easter bunny. And he's not supposed to say the word stupid, said Andrea. That's not a nice word. Sorry. A bo bunch of grown-ups crowded around the door and started taking pictures. Like they never saw a guy dressed up as a bunny before, right? The Easter bunny was carrying a basket. I got up on my tiptoes to see if there were any peeps in the basket, but the only thing in it was a bunch of fake green plastic grass. What's up with that stuff? Do you have any peeps? I asked. Sorry, kids, said the Easter bunny. I'm not allowed to talk. Then he hopped away. I thought the Easter bunny was supposed to give us candy, said Neil, the nude kid. If I don't get some candy soon, I'm gonna pass out, said Michael. They were right. It was Easter and so far we didn't get any candy. No chocolate, no marshmallows, no peeps, no nothing. All we did was roll eggs around the grass and dye them. You know, I said to the gang, something tells me that guy was not the real Easter bunny. What do you mean? Asked Ryan. He's probably a lunatic who kidnapped the real Easter bunny, stole his costume and tied him to the railroad tracks on the outskirts of town. I said, that stuff happens all the time, you know. Arlo, stop trying to scare Emily, said Andrea. I'm scared, said Emily. I thought Emily was going to start crying and run out of the room like she usually does. But as it turned out, we all went running out of the room. Everybody come outside, Mrs. Bubbles shouted. It's time for the big Easter egg hunt. Chapter eight, the golden egg. While we were inside that whole time, the grown-ups must have been outside hiding Easter eggs. 
Everybody ran out of the room and gathered on the back porch around Mayor Hubble and Mrs. Bubbles. Okay, kids, said the mayor. There are hundreds of plastic eggs scattered all over the lawn. And there's a little something special for you inside each one of them, said Mrs. Bubbles. Me and the gang all looked at each other and mouthed the word candy. I licked my lips. Finally, we were going to get some candy. It was about time. The servant guys came around, handing out empty bags to everyone. Oh, and one thing we should mention, Mrs. Bubbles said, there's one special egg. It's the golden egg. Ooh, everybody said, because golden stuff is always cool. What's special about the golden egg? Ryan shouted. You know the Burger Queen next to the mall? Asked Mayor Hubble. I talked them into sponsoring this year's golden Easter egg. Sponsor? What does that mean? Asked Michael. It means that if you open up the golden egg, said Mrs. Bubbles, you'll find some hundred dollar bills inside. They were donated by Burger Queen. Wow, everybody said, which is mom upside down. How many hundred dollar bills? One of the grown-ups shouted. 10, said Mayor Hubble. 10 hundred dollar bills? I'm glad we studied the 10 times table in school. 10 times 100 is, uh, add a zero, uh, no, add two zeros, no, that's not it. A thousand dollars, Andrea shouted. A thousand dollars, that's almost a million. Wow, everybody said, which is mom upside down. Yes, said Miss Bubbles. One of you is going to go home today with a thousand dollars. Everybody was excited, even the grown-ups. Suddenly, they all stopped drinking coffee and talking about the weather. They were putting their cups down and inching closer to the lawn. There was electricity in the air. Well, not really. If there was electricity in the air, we all would have been electrocuted. On your mark, said the mayor, get set, go get them, go get those eggs. Mrs. Bubbles blew a whistle and the next thing I knew, there were a million hundred people running all over the lawn. Out of my way, somebody shouted, let's go, a thousand dollars, grab the eggs. Hurry up, everybody was freaking out. It was like they were giving away free candy. Oh, wait a minute. They were giving away free candy. I ran out onto the lawn and spotted a few eggs that were behind a tree. I didn't even take the time to open them up to get the treats out before I scooped them up and put them in my bag. I wanted to find more eggs. Those first graders were monsters at the egg roll, but you should have seen the parents at the egg hunt. They were all shoving each other, elbowing each other out of the way, tripping over each other and trampling over the flowers and bushes, they all had crazy looks in their eyes. I hadn't seen grown-ups act like this since the last time my dad was late for work and he couldn't find his car keys. I gotta find that golden egg, some guy said as he shoved an old lady out of his way. Not if I find it first, said the old lady who whacked the guy with her cane. You should have been there. Those grown-ups were hilarious, if you ask me. Grown-ups like money as much as kids like candy. All right, so we will read some more of our story tomorrow. I hope that you enjoyed.